I'm Mr. O, here with another oh, yeah! moment at the Children's Museum of Houston. In a prior Oh Wow Moment episode, we discussed how we keep our balance. Specifically, we talked about a series of organs inside your ear called the semicircular canals. The canals sense changes in motion and send the information to your brain, which then sends instructions out to your muscles. But that's where we stopped. We didn't really discuss what our muscles do to maintain our balance. So to correct that oversight, we're gonna do a couple of experiments to really explore how we keep our balance. But before we do that, we need to remind ourselves about center of mass. Center of mass is the balance point for all the matter in our bodies. Some people prefer center of gravity, but that's not quite correct because we're talking about the matter in our bodies, so I prefer the term center of mass. Now in humans, the center of mass is located here in our abdomen, and so long as our center of mass is over our feet, we maintain our balance. So often we shift our bodies around to maintain our center of mass over our feet to maintain our balance. My two lab assistants are gonna run us through a couple of examples. First, I'll stand on my tiptoes. Look closely at Avery's body. When she stands on her tiptoes, she shifts her body forward to stay balanced. Next, I'll stand on one leg. Now watch David. When he stands on one leg, he shifts his body to the side to keep his balance. Now I'll bend down and touch my toes. This time, when she bends down to touch her toes, she shifts her body backwards slightly to maintain her balance. Finally, I'll bend over and pick up a chair. This one's a little more complicated. By picking up a chair, David adds more mass to himself, so his body actually has to lean backwards slightly as he stands up so he can maintain his balance. So these all seem like very simple tasks to do, but that's because they can shift their weight around to maintain their balance. But what if I prevent them from shifting their weight? Hmm. Let me show it to you a different way. Before we begin, remember, science is fun, but it can also be dangerous, so always have a responsible adult helping you. So we just saw my lab assistants perform some pretty simple tasks that most of you can probably do at home. So we're going to repeat them, but this time we're gonna make them impossible. Earlier, I stood on my tiptoes. This time, I'm gonna stand facing the wall with my toes up against the wall. Now, when I'm trying to stand on my tiptoes, Earlier, I stood on one leg. This time, I'm going to place my right shoulder and right foot up against the wall. Now, when I lift my left leg so that I'm standing on my right leg. Earlier, I touched my toes. This time, I'm going to stand with my back against the wall, and when I try to touch my toes. In all three of these cases, your body needs to shift its position to maintain its center of mass over your feet. However, the wall prevents you from making these critical shifts so the tasks become impossible. Now, let's do one final challenge. Earlier, I lifted a chair with no problem. This time, I'm going to stand with my toes against the wall. Then, I'll take two steps backwards, toe to heel, so that I'm a total of three foot lengths from the wall. Now, I'll bend over so my back is flat and my head is touching the wall. But, when I lift the chair and try to stand up... In this case, David's center of mass is so far away from his feet that he's unable to regain his balance and stand up. But here's something interesting. Avery can do it. In fact, most women can do it, while most men cannot because women are structurally different from men, causing their centers of mass to be lower than men. So that means that Avery's center of mass is still close enough to her feet that she can regain her balance. This has been another Oh Wow Moment from the Children's Museum of Houston. We hope your mind can come out to play.